Every year, American restaurants use countless vats of cooking oil for everything from stir fry to french fries, leaving behind three billion gallons of waste grease. This is all the fried food, all the flour, all the drippings. This, ugh. All those foul leftovers used to get sent to hazardous waste dumps. But today, I'm turning a bunch of that dirty crud into clean, lean car fuel. Located in the small town of Wilson, North Carolina, Triangle Biofuels has been busy slurping up goo and making cars go for over four years. Today, I'm joining President Zach Hamm as he makes his rounds picking up what local restaurants leave behind. So this is the back door of a restaurant. And they come out here with their grease every day and pour it into this, the screen. I mean, that's just food. And all that gets screened out, sort of and becomes the oil inside this can. That is what Triangle Biofuels loves. In fact, in the last 10 years, the price for waste grease has rocketed from about 8 to 49 cents a pound, or about 360 a gallon. I mean, I worked in restaurants when I was a kid. You just dump this stuff somewhere. Right, they used to pay to have it removed. Now most restaurants actually get money for it. Interesting, so this is a valuable resource. This is my raw material that I make bites a lot of. Tapping this valuable resource requires a giant vacuum. All right, so we're gonna hook that up to this inlet here. The pump is capable of slurping up 40 gallons a minute from the barrels and pumping just as much out once the tank returns to the plant. And then I gotta throw this valve and you're ready to go. You've just got to make sure it's on the right setting. Is that going to splash? Well, it's not supposed to. Or maybe it will. Well, lesson learned. So we got some grease on the camera. That's pretty good. It's getting there. Uh, yeah. What are you worried about? This time, Zach makes sure we're good to go. Is this the typical amount that you're picking up at these different places? Usually about 5 to 15 gallons a week is pretty common for a restaurant. But there's hundreds of these places that That's you go right. to. Right. And you can basically fill up a tanker like that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Good with that, just bang a little bit like that, yeah. Because it's coming out somewhere, so I'd rather be in there. Once the 1,800-gallon tanker is loaded with grease from hundreds of restaurants around the region, Zach returns to his plan. How long does it take to offload one of these? In, uh, 20 minutes. Where he pumps the cocktail of oil, grease, fat, and who knows what into a holding tank. So now this is the, this is the resource that you work for, with. Right, right. The this raw is, material. There's oil from all the restaurants we've loaded up. From the truck, the sludge is pumped into a 5,000-gallon holding tank and then into tank one. There, a methanol and a catalyst are added, which break up the sticky triglycerides, or fats, and split them up into esters, or fuel. T1 is where the biodiesel is actually made, but then it has to be filtered and purified in a series of tanks until it's certified and ready for the pump. So the basic act of making biodiesel happens in that first tank. That's the first and reaction. The rest of it is refining that product. You got it. It's not a difficult process to actually make it. The refining process and cleaning it up to meet the national standards is what's hard. Today, biodiesel production is booming. I'm going to lift that lid. And you can see it's filling this tank inside. Oh, the yeah. Next step. And it's only taken about 100 years for people to realize it's valuable. Developed in the 1890s by inventor Rudolf Diesel, the diesel engine has been moving cars, trucks, and trailers for over a century. Based on compression versus the ignition of a gasoline engine, the early diesel engines were designed to run on many different fuels, from kerosene to coal dust. In 1900, at the World's Fair, the French government showed off the very first diesel engine running solely on peanut oil. And while biodiesel is a far cry from peanut oil, having been filtered and processed to an extremely high federal standard, the raw material is very similar. The processed end product is less toxic than table salt and biodegrades as fast as sugar. So you're gonna smell something that smells a little like booze, but not quite? And the method for refining it uses more or less the same process as distilling booze. Turn that switch there, I'm gonna turn the other one on. Okay. What we're doing now is we're bringing in the fuel from the tank we just filled, and it's running through this column, heating it up, pulling off the methanol, and then taking the biodiesel back out as demethylated biodiesel. So this is a still. 
Pretty much. Okay, so there's a boiling point, and that methanol is going up faster than the rest of it all? Exactly. And you're distilling that off? And exactly. Uh, voila. That's it, right there. What I love is that it's not toxic, is it's it? not toxic, biodegradable, burns 80% cleaner than diesel fuel. That's incredible. So what happens now? You've made the fuel. How do you ship it away? We push it out to the out tanks outside to load it in the truck. All right, let's go. I've climbed onto this giant tanker All right. to fill it with 7,000 gallons. There she is. Biodiesel. In 2011, over 1 billion gallons of biofuel were produced and used in the U.S. and worldwide. More trains, planes, and automobiles are reaping the benefits. One man's gooey trash is Triangle Biofuel's treasure. Here's a little chemistry class for you. This is an example of the very thing they pull out of those restaurants, disgusting, gross triglycerides, versus that is pure biodiesel. I mean, it smells good. It actually smells good. And it powers a car. That's incredible. 